Hi everybody, it's me, Mrs. TK, with another lesson for you from God's Word, the Bible. I also brought something I really enjoy, which is balloons. You know I love to make balloon sculptures. Oh, hey, you wanna see the world's fastest balloon animal? I can make it, the world's fastest balloon animal. I mean, not that it's a fast animal, it's the fastest balloon animal somebody could make quickly. Does that make sense? Anyway, I can do it. You can time me and everything. I'm gonna make a balloon animal out of, the, out of this right here, and it will be the fastest one on record. Ready? On your mark, get set, go. Done. It's a blue jay. Get it? A blue jay, like the bird, but it's a blue jay. Okay, well, I guess that isn't very funny, but hey, I knew a guy named Jay, and uh, he was actually pretty blue indeed. For most of his life, he was a very sad guy. That's what it means when you're feeling blue. You see, Jay had a lot of trouble. Uh, when he was a kid, he was always raising cane. That means he was getting in trouble a lot. He could never seem to get into the swing of things. That means nothing ever went right for him. And before you knew it, his life was in a downward spiral. That means nothing was getting better. <sighs> Jay was sad. He was a blue Jay indeed, and he needed to find a way to have something in his life that seemed to be missing. When he thought about it, he realized that there was like this place in his heart that felt like it was empty. It was a great big hole. And he wanted to fill that hole with something that would make him happy. So, my buddy Jay went looking for something that would do just that. He became a regular detective, searching for something that would bring him joy. Why, he tried music. He took up the banjo. Oh, my darling, oh, my darling, oh, my darling Clementine. That didn't get him any joy. All that got him was a bunch of people with their fingers in their ears hurling rotten tomatoes in his general direction. So then he tried food. He thought maybe an all-day sucker would be the thing. So that's all he ate, all day, the all-day sucker. But all that got him was the three-day bellyache and a mouthful of cavities. And then he thought sports. Sports, that will bring me joy. So he took up tennis. All that got him was a bad case of athlete's foot and stinky pits. Nothing was working until finally one day, one of Jay's friends invited him to come with him to church. Jay went along and while he was there, he learned that Jesus is what was missing. A relationship with Jesus was the thing that was missing in his life. That's called the God-shaped hole. We all have a place in us that only God can fill. And only when Jay learned about Jesus, about how much Jesus loves him, wants to be his friend, has prepared heaven for him at the end of his life. Well, only once Jay started to understand God's great love, only then did he really get it. Knowing Jesus, that, my friends, is how Jay found joy. Huh? Isn't it great to serve a God who gives us so much joy? 
God brings us joy in so many ways, as my buddy Jay found out. One major reason we can have joy is that God wants to have a relationship with us. He sent Jesus to be with us, to be our friend. And everyone who believes in God, who believes in Jesus, has that good friend and has a wonderful reason to be joyful. Today's Bible account focuses on how God's promises bring us joy. That's because he always keeps his promises. What does he promise us? Well, for that, I guess I should consult the box called God's Promises. Um, ooh, and I think it's a song. Yeah, it goes like this. God's Promises, see here? He promises love. He promises, whoa, forgiveness. That's not in the song. I better put that to the side. I don't think that's part of it. He promises love. He promises peace. That's in the song. He promises joy. That's in it too. Which never shall cease. If we will obey and follow his way. He promises joy. He promises peace. He promises love. That's an old Sunday school song I learned as a kid. But it didn't have this word in it. Forgiveness? Why is that important? Oh, I forgot. I forgot. This is really important. It totally should be in my old Sunday school song. Because joy, peace, and love are wonderful for us here on earth. But if we don't have forgiveness, forgiveness through Jesus' death and resurrection, then all we have is joy, peace, and love during our days here on earth. Forgiveness is what we need to be in heaven with God someday. That way we'll have joy, peace, and love that last forever. That's really cool. And we can count on these promises of God because God keeps his promises. You might make promises that sometimes you blow it and make a mistake and don't do what you said you would do. But when God promises, he is faithful. He keeps his promises to us. He never, ever breaks a promise he's made to us. And boy, Abraham and Sarah, they counted on that. We've been learning about those two people. They had been promised all their lives that they would have a child. And it's what they wanted more than anything. In fact, God had even promised Abraham that his descendants, his children and their children and their children's children and their children's 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 children would number like the stars in the sky. And God promised that and Abraham waited. And Sarah waited. It was a long wait. But God is faithful to all his promises and it turns out that when Sarah was 90 years old and Abraham was 100, finally they got what they had been waiting for. God kept his promise and gave them a baby, a little boy. And Sarah, who was so full of joy at finally having this child that God promised, Sarah was so thrilled she named the baby Isaac because that word in their language, Hebrew, meant he laughs. He laughs. So much laughter, so much joy. That's what a child brings. Sarah and Abraham discovered that true joy comes from knowing that God keeps his promises. And just as Sarah and Abraham celebrated the joy God gave to them, we too should take time every day to celebrate the joy that God gives to us in so many ways. One of the things that always brings me joy is my puppet friends. Can't like me. This is Shelly. How you doing? 
Shelly's a cutie pie. I haven't seen you in ages. What have you been doing, Shelly? Oh, I, I've been working on something. I kind of need a little bit of help. Little help, huh? Maybe I could help. Um, what is it you're working on? I am writing a joke book. Ooh, I love jokes. Yeah, me too, me too. Can I cry a few out on you? Sure. If I think they're funny, maybe other people will think they're funny. Sure. Okay, okay. here's the first one. Uh, uh, what do you call a sleeping bull? A sleeping bull? You mean like a male cow? Mm-hmm. I give up. What do you call a sleeping bull? A bulldozer. <laughs> you crack yourself up. Mm -hmm. Are you? Uh, oh, I got another one. Uh, I know. Uh, it's when do astronauts eat? When, when do astronauts eat? I really don't know. At launch time. <laughs> Launch! Get it? Launch? That's pretty funny. Those are actually pretty good jokes. I think your joke book will be a big hit. Oh, I hope so. I love to laugh. You know that? And, and oh, you know what? The, the, uh, the other person I love to see laugh is my Uncle Sebastian. I want him to read my joke book, see. Oh, really? Yeah, it's going to be his Christmas present. Super! Oh, that's really nice to hear. Why do you like to hear your Uncle Sebastian laugh? Because when he laughs, he, he kind of snorts. He goes like this. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, that's how he laughs. It's ridiculous. Are you sure he's a snail and not a pig? Uh, well, when you see him at Thanksgiving dinner, you might think he's a pig. I don't know. Maybe. But, uh... I like, I like your joke book, and I think your Uncle Sebastian will like it, too. Hey, you know, speaking of laughter, I was just telling the kids how when Abraham and Sarah had a child, they actually gave him a name that means he laughs. Uh, really? What, what name was that? Was it Mephibosheth? No. It's kind of a funny name, though. Kind of is. Was it... Was it Nebuchadnezzar? That's a funny one, too. It makes me laugh. <laughs> no. They named their baby Isaac. Isaac became the, f the beginning of a huge generation of people. A whole nation came from this one family. Oh, that's pretty neat. Uh, hey, you know, if we got our names by what people say about us, uh, maybe my mother would have called me Headache, because I think I give her a lot of those. Well, I'm sure Isaac gave a lot of laughter to his parents. They were so full of joy that God kept his promise. Hmm, I really like this. Is, is that kind of like how my jokes bring you joy? They do bring me joy. You're a pretty good joke writer. A uh, writer? Oh, I stole these from somewhere else. You're writing your own book of jokes you stole from some other book? Uh, yeah. What's wrong with that? Don't try to get published. But I'm sure your Uncle Sebastian will love it. That's super. Well, uh, I'm going to see you guys later. i got to go work on some more of those, okay? More jokes. By work on, you mean look them up in other books? No. Good. I was going to use the Internet. Oh, okay. Well... You get to work on that for your uncle. We'll see you later, Shelly. Bye, guys. Oh, he's waving to you. <laughs> he is a silly little friend, isn't he? Would you please pray with me? Today, just doing this lesson for you has brought me a lot of joy, and I want to thank God for all the joy he brings to us. So fold your hands and think these words in your heart as I say them. God, you are truly the source of all joy. You take care of us, you love us, and you keep the promises you make to us. We want to give you our praise, our service, and our love. 
Thank you, God, for giving us joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks a lot. It was great to spend this time with you. I'll see you next time.